Hello, my name is Marlies Gibson, and this is the Budget Debacle Case Study for EDL 854, Module 12. Starting now with the case summary, we have Mr. Santos, who is the building president, and he has appointed a new parent to the school of Briardale Elementary, uh, Mr. Barely, as the Briardale um, Foundation president. And Mr. Barely has come up with an idea that he has used in his past when he was in college at his fraternity to... Um, do a raffle for cash event to raise money for um, supplemental programs at Briardale Elementary. And just as he was about to pull the first ticket for the event, the local sheriff's department came in and arrested him for a misdemeanor. Um, legal issues we have here, uh, according to the Kansas Department of Revenue, um, raffle Amendment SCR 1618, it states that raffles must be licensed and regulated by the Office of Charitable Gaming, and that license must be purchased 30 days prior to selling any raffle tickets. And anyone that is a nonprofit organization, so a school would fall under that, um, and selling those tickets, that license must be bought if proceeds are to exceed $25,000, actually up to $100,000. Um, ethical issues that we have. The policies and laws do not appear um, that they were shared or anyone involved on the foundation to be trained um, for those fundraising laws. Um, oversight of the foundation by the school is definitely not present. It appears that um, Mr. Santos, um, he was kind of okay with any um, decisions that um, the committee made or the foundation made and um, didn't appear that he kind of um, put up any red flags before this was put in place. Um, the funds for the supplemental programs may not be available now um, <clears throat> for the arts and music and foreign language program. And also, just altogether, there needs to be more involvement by the principal. Um, Mr. Barely, um, like I said, who's the Briardale Foundation president, He's been arrested and convicted of a misdemeanor for hosting this raffle for cash event. It just kind of seems like he was just in it to raise as much money as he could. Um, there was another parent that is the president of a foundation for another elementary school that he knew from college. And it just kind of appeared that he wasn't in it to get money for the supplemental programs, but just to flat out raise as much money as he could. So the facts of the case, the people we have is Mr. Santos, the building principal, Mr. Barely, um, who has been arrested, the curriculum committee, um, when it comes time to um, looking at the supplemental programs curriculum, um, Mr. Santos kind of turns it over to them. Once the money has been raised, he typically agrees with the choices they make. The district obviously is involved, all the elementary schools have the same kind of foundation where they raise the money um, for this supplemental program. The teachers obviously are involved, the students, the parents and families, and then the local sheriff's office. Um, the place is Briardale um, Elementary. It's one of six elementary schools in the district, um, range anywhere from 500 to 800 students. And at this school, they have 600 students, K through five. and the district, they fund the basic skills curriculum and they do not fund the supplemental program, which is why the Briardale Foundation is in place and they fund those programs for art, music, and foreign language. So when looking at um, anyone that has been affected by this, um, the district community and school image are obviously going to be damaged because the incident made it onto the front of the newspaper. Students and teachers will be affected if the funding for the supplemental programs cannot be raised. Parents, families, and community members may be hesitant in participating in future fundraiser events um, at Briardale Elementary, but possibly any of the district schools. And Mr. Santos and Mr. Barely definitely will be questioned and judged for their actions. So kind of some more things I feel I need to know. Um, to move forward to make a decision. Is there another way to raise money for these supplemental programs? Is there um, money in any other areas of the budget at the school? 
how much money was actually raised at this event. We know the law in Kansas, any um, nonprofit that raises $25,000 or more up to um, exceeding $100,000 has to have a license. How had the fund, um, excuse me, the foundation program raised money in the past and why, um, obviously with Mr. Barely came coming in and new parent, he had the idea, idea for a raffle for cash event, but how had they been getting their money prior to that? And did Mr. Santos or Mr. Barely know the laws and policies for raising money for schools? Um, so when looking at how to handle this incident, um, as the principal, you have some options and option one could be to do nothing and to let the foundation keep going as normal, um, kind of let Mr. Barely take the consequences and keep moving. Option two is to remove Mr. Barely and replace him with someone who is a committed member of the Briardale Foundation. Um, Mr. Barely's, you know, a new parent to the school. So just removing him and letting the foundation go about how they have before. Option three, the principal should attend Briardale Foundation meetings. And option four, to just cancel the foundation altogether and leave the um, fundraising solely up to the school. So pros and cons for each of these options. Option one, it, to do nothing. Pros, the group can continue on, um, let <clears throat> Mr. Barely have the consequences, which could save time um, to just keep moving and raise the money that they need for the supplemental programs. The cons, if you just move forward, you're not addressing it, it could happen again and the reputation of the school and even the program could be at stake. Option two, remove Mr. Barely. Pros, you could um, go about selecting um, someone that you already know is trustworthy and they have experience, and that way you could um, you know, respond ethically and remove Mr. Barely because he was the one um, that got arrested for the actions. And cons, you would have to train someone new and you could have retaliation from Mr. Barely, and he could say, you know, that Mr. Santos didn't train him and prepare him for this position. Option three, principal attends all meetings, pros. Obviously, you would know what was going on. You would be part of that decision making um, for future events like this raffle for cash. If, um, you know, you've been attending the meetings and you know policy and law, you would know that um, things need to be in place before it could take place. Cons, obviously, time. Um, principal's time is very limited, and this would be something that would require more time, and it could be viewed as micromanaging by the foundation. Option four, to cancel the foundation committee altogether. Pros, um, less likely to have issues. Cons, you would be putting more work on the staff and you could lose those supplemental programs if the money's not raised, raised um, by the school. Okay, so the best option I feel is option three for the principal to attend the meetings so they can know what's going on with Bardale Foundation. With the principal attending, you can make sure to apply those laws, policies, and regulations. You could train um, each member that joins the foundation, make sure they have the knowledge and the skills and they are committed um, to manage um, the different fundraisers, excuse me, fundraisers and the future. You can ensure that the plan supports the school improvement and student development. Obviously, the raffle for cash event was to raise money for the supplemental programs for school, but you can ensure if you're part of those meetings that any money that is raised is for students and then communication will be present because you will be at the meetings and with this option I know um, if you have the backlash that you the members may say you're micromanaging but obviously with something happening like this raffle for cash event you can talk about how you want to avoid um, it happening again and you are um, there to you know, support and not make sure they are following through on laws and policies, but be there to have knowledge about them. And so to implement 
option three with the principal um, attending the meetings. Obviously, step one is to address the incident and take ownership for letting it happen. Yes, Mr. Barely was the one who had the idea and he got arrested for the misdemeanor, but as a principal, you should know what is going on at your school, especially um, when money is involved. So taking ownership and um, uh, maybe that's in the newspaper, maybe um, you address parents, families, you know, the district, anyone, um, all stakeholders, community members that would be affected by this. Step two, outline those policies to keep this from happening again, to promote, you know, the current and future success and well-being of each student. This would maybe look like meeting with the superintendent um, at the district office and making sure you do know the laws and policies and talk about what training you could put in place to make sure you can train all future um, committee mem members on this foundation um, program. <clears throat> Step three, build a positive culture within the committee. Like I had mentioned before, it may be viewed as micromanaging, um, but you can just explain, you know, we had this horrific event happen and you just don't want to tap again. And it is your responsibility um, to make sure all activities that bring in money um, follow those laws and policies because it, ultimately it is your school. And step four, a system of checks and balances um, need to be developed to improve data informed and equitable school resource plans. Um, all money should be evenly distributed across the school, across the district, um, for all students. So not only with the principal um, attending these meetings, the principal should also have uh, maybe a bookkeeper to um, double check their work to make sure everything is being handled um, with integrity and to make sure the students are getting these supplemental programs um, like the goal of the intention of the raffle for cash event. Um, so in all, I think there are ways that the principal could have um, kept this from happening. Um, but I think moving forward that the program is put in place and it it has been it had been successful in the past. So it was just about, um, you know, knowing those laws and policies from the beginning to ensure that this doesn't happen. But that is my case study. Thank you for watching.